What's going on guys? Welcome back to WDYD CSP. What do you do as a central spell processor? Alright guys, today we're going to continue um, with uh, visual learning. And today we're going to learn about rigid and semi-rigid scopes. I'm excluding flexible endoscopes from this discussion because flexible, flexible endoscopes has been, um, although I don't agree, in a world of, on its own. Um, but we'll talk about that at some other time. All right, rigid and semi-rigid scopes. Okay. Uh, of course, we want to make sure that we handle them carefully. Do not ever grab a scope by a shaft. Okay. What do I mean? Okay. So this is the shaft of the instrument. You never want to pick it up by the shaft of the instrument. You always want to pick it up by the eyepiece and light posts. Um, body right this is the proper way to handle a scope you also don't want to be all over the place like this is some magic wand it is not okay you want to handle this with two hands as best as possible when you're placing it into a container you want to ensure that you secure the distal tip and then push down on the eyepiece and the body to secure it in this place or hold or whatever you have all right just a quick little anatomy this is your eyepiece for your um, endoscope, you have your light post, you have your shaft, and then you have your viewing angle. Your viewing angle is the cut that you're going to look at, or the ape when you look through the eyepiece or through a camera, whatever it's going to do, where is it going to look at? How do you know the angle of your scope? Well, it should be listed on the actual eyepiece body there. So, this is a 70 degree scope here. All right, so. Knowing all that, we want to inspect the cleanliness on the prep and pad side. We want to ensure that the um, distal tip, that the glass on there is not cracked, um, as, as well as the eyepiece. Okay, um, so when you're visually inspecting, okay, just like this one, I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera, there's a little glaze over that eye. So that's improper rinsing and decontamination. Um, or some detergent that's left over a dry, or it could be wear and tear um, of the actual scope itself. The other inspection point that you want to do is inspect for functionality. Okay, you want to make sure that there's no dents across the shaft, no cracks. Again, you want to inspect the light fiber. So I don't know if you guys can see that little light there. Okay, there's a light at the end of that scope. If I cover the light post, there's no light, and there is light. You want to look for burnt out fibers not only at the distal tip but at the actual post itself so you're going to hold the scope up to the light and look for burnt out fibers your visual test for um, clarity and for um, function is you're going to grab the smallest print you can possibly look at okay i'm going to use that you're going to hold the distal tip about an inch away from your car. Now, if you don't have a steady hand, the easiest way to hold it is to hold it like a pencil and use your fingers as a post on the table and kind of line, uh, zoom, going in like a cue ball, almost like you're like a cue stick. You're going to look at your distal tip and the image you should be looking at, all right, is going to be a nice almost a perfect circle with kind of a notch or a pointer okay that pointer there is to show you the direction of the angle that you're looking at right that way you can locate anatomy in the body blase blah or whatever you're looking at right um it should be nice and clear nice clear circle no shadowing around no fuzziness no blurred areas on it um you want to look at that very well Sometimes it helps to connect this to a light source to get even better clarity. Um, there are visual towers available and there's equipment available to help with that inspection so that it can be an automated inspection rather than a manual inspection because our eyes can deceive us. Another word on uh, rigid endoscopes is that as the name implies, they should not be bent. Okay, there should be no flexion on there. You shouldn't see no bends or anything like that. The light post has the capability of having some accessories that's utilized at point of use. Those accessories may include a small light adapter that screws on and a large light adapter that screws on. If your scopes come back with these adapters, these adapters should come off. 
and if they're processed with these on sometimes they become hard to come off so just make sure you're not taking something off that's not supposed to come off um, just something that does come off they also have these like quick adapters or quick light adapters that go on there and this can go on here as well okay just make sure that these come off as well the other thing I like to tell folks with the adapters is um, a lot of times you'll see these. This is, this collar right here is the accessory adapters. And sometimes you'll see your scope come with the accessories still attached on there. Okay, if you see this, okay, this is not how the scope is designed. Um, and you should recognize that by this little uh, tab right here, this little handle right here that allows this to turn. And remove that accessory. All accessories should be removed off of your scopes. Okay, scopes can be operative with just visual. This is a visual scope, right? There is no cannulas, nothing like that. All you can do is look with the scope. Okay, scopes come in different diameters, lengths, and even designs. So, this is also a rigid scope, but it is an angled scope, right? And it's an operative scope. How do I know it's an operative scope? Well, there's a channel in there, right? There's a channel. There's two flush ports to flush and, and suck, and then an instrument channel that allows for a device to go down and do whatever it needs to be done. So this is an operative scope. Same thing applies with this, is you wanna make sure that you're inspecting for cleanliness, but because this has a channel, you wanna flush it or use a bore scope that you can go down. Now again, that's the big thing with bore scopes is you have to have the proper sizes to go down there so i may be able to go down the instrument channel but i might not be able to go down the flush ports so it's important to have the appropriate size boroscope to be able to inspect or the proper technique to do so okay as i stated they come in different diameters so this one right here is a five millimeter scope compared to this one okay which is a little bit bigger it's not necessarily a 10 millimeter um, it might be like an eight millimeter scope. 10 millimeters is a lot bigger than that. Um, but you can see they come in different diameters. And this too can have accessories attached to it. So at the end here, um, you can have different accessories attached to this, this piece. So you wanna make sure that you remove those accessories. All right, um, as well as the light post. Lastly is we're gonna talk about semi-rigid scopes. Semi-rigid scopes are typically um, ureteroscopes, okay? Um, they're typically used in uh, urology cases um, to visualize the urethra. Um, they're almost always operative. I've never seen a non-operative semi-rigid uh, uh, scope. I might be um, mistaken, but you can see that channel on there, right? Okay. Same thing with the light source there. You wanna make sure that you're inspecting a light source for any damages. And because this is an operator scope, you wanna flush that channel or use the appropriate size boroscope to inspect for internal cleanliness. Just like other scopes, this can have accessories attached to it. So this is a one set accessory here. Okay, that goes on there. So you wanna make sure that when you see these, that you take them off in the prep and pack area. Inspection for visualization is the same exact thing. You're gonna hold this about an inch away from the product and look through unless you have a video tower or a automated system that allows for inspection. As the name implies, this is a semi-flexible. It allows for just a little bit of flex. So when you put it in, when the surgeon puts it in, he's able to manipulate it a little bit. You can even see the curve on that. And that's kind of extreme. So this might have to go out for repair, even though it's not broken. That's a little too excessive. Do not ever try to bend that back in place because I guarantee you will damage it. Um, some scopes, um, just to mention, the eyepiece does come off. Um, just check the eye views to make sure that those eyepieces um, don't come off. Um, and always handle with care. These are very delicate and will break easily. All right, guys, as always, stay true to yourselves. Keep it 100. Continue educating yourself. Until next time, peace.